Hey everyone. All right. So I so got up this morning, and for the first time in a long time, it's been like a month. I've been struggling to like do Operation Flying Eagle, and I think especially, um, I realized like one of the things I was really struggling with was like reconciling what was going on in the outside world with what was happening inside of me because I spent. You know, I spent the greater part from March to like mid June um, just doing a lot of meditation and a lot of um, internal focus stuff. And I was in a really, really good place. And I am in a really good place. And that came from a lot of just emotional and mental introspection. And then just sort of the luxury of, you know, just having the time off during the whole COVID thing to really reassess. And it was a really good time. And I think one of the toughest things I struggled with was coming back out in the world and seeing how out of sync I was with it. And that's not a bad thing because I started to see that more and more like the world, kind of the externally focused surface is it's really incongruent and it's filled with a lot of lies and a lot of truths um, that have been discombobulated. And one of the things that I really was really struggling with was looking for connection and how to reconcile my internal world with what I was going on in the outer world. Here, I you know I gotta hold up. I'm just gonna pause this and get some water. All right, that's much better. Anyway, um, so yeah, one of the things that I started seeing more and more was just I'm really really tired of like how politics and everything has become mainstream and just like the focus on the less fundamental human elements and how how shallow and um, just unsubstantial a lot of the external interactions I have are. Like everything from going to food, meeting people, talking, having discourse, just so many of these things, there's just not, it's not very high quality. And I came to see more and more that I enjoy my own thoughts and I have more time and I have better focus kind of being by myself than anything else. And that was a little discouraging because I love people and I want to be able to connect. But at the same time, I just felt like generally the world and a lot of people I was meeting in it were taking far more value than they were giving me. And so it spurred me on to want to kind of give more value. But Anyway, I, I, the real thing I want to talk about is first off, like, I love the United States. I love this country. Like, I love living in America. I think, so I have, you know, I started this kind of company thing and I'm writing these books now and I just think there's so many opportunities and so many great things that are all around us. And this country has been a big part of that. And it's not perfect. It never has been. But perfection is like this illusion, right? It's this complete erroneous construct that everyone's been chasing. And a lot of it, I think, is just sort of this myth of white privilege and this idea. Because this is the thing that really, really bugs me. So, like, I live in Brooklyn, New York, which is filled with a lot of liberals right white black just a lot of people who are kind of on the left wing and there's this idea of privilege which i'll be honest with especially with this black lives matter movement coming down um to be honest i feel like it in a lot of ways it's just like white supremacy and i say that that sounds really crazy because it's like well black blm is about you know, trying to stop race brutality and, like, protect black people. Now, you know, anyone who knows me, like, I don't know who's going to watch this video, but anyone who knows me knows that I was beaten up by cops about three years ago, and I kind of had my life, uh, we went through a huge ringer after that, and, you know, I was a black guy, obviously, and I had a really intense, intense time. Like, I wasn't able to get a job. It was, I was broke, I was poor, I was getting out of a relationship that was really hurting me. And one of the biggest takeaways from all that was just recognizing how much actual power I have. And then in spite of the fact that I am black, 
um, I still managed to pull myself out of that. And one of the biggest things I saw and had to come to terms with was the fact that we live in a day and age where honestly, like race doesn't matter as much as it race only matters as much as we think it does. And I think this whole BLM movement, uh, I think it's really deeply insidious. I'll be honest. Um, I feel like there's probably KKK members who are more supportive of Black Lives Matter than I am. And those guys would be the people who actually see it. I feel like the other people who are supportive of Black Lives Matter are probably more in line with white supremacy, but they're just ignorant of it, right? Now, how do I say that? Well, this idea of believing you have a privilege and that the system and things uh, somehow inherently benefit you, which isn't true, right? It's completely erroneous. Like there's no actual laws. There's no actual legislation or systemic things that are happening that make it more advantageous for a white person, right? And I think you see that in like a lot of the social demographics, like the highest demographics for in terms of wealth, you know, it's Indian, it's a, so if you, it's Asians, Asians are number one, but a lot of people think it's Asians, like, you know, Chinese, Japanese, but if you actually go into the sub demographics, a lot of it is actually Indian Americans, right? They're the ones that are coming in and bolstering it up. But then, you know, you have the Chinese, you have the Japanese, Vietnamese, you have all those guys as well. But then like a lot of people don't know this, like right actually underneath uh, Indian Americans and before Japanese and before Chinese Americans, you have West Africans, right? So that's people in Nigeria, Ghana, Bennett, right? Those types of places. And what do all these things have in common, right? And I think it's, there's some universal factors and the ultimate privilege is having like a stable family, right? Like, I'm just going to put that out there. Like if you ask me personally, you're like, what is the ultimate privilege? Having a stable family, having a family and people who, you know, have your back from the time you're small all the way up until you can die. Like that is the ultimate privilege. So whatever person has that going forward has got, you know, the kind of the end all be all. Now in the United States, having a stable family is not, it's not a popular thing and blacks historically don't have it, right? And it's because 70% of African Americans kids are raised by single moms. Like that's ridiculous. Come on. Like, and then people say, like, oh, it's white privilege. It's like, no, man, there's not white privilege. It's especially if you're contrasting it with blacks, it's just they don't have good families, right? And why? It's because they're having kids out of wedlock. Like, duh. <laughs> right? And now you can say all these problems or all these reasons for it, but I mean, at the end of the day, like if you go and get a girl pregnant and she's got to raise that kid on her own, that's a decision that's made in a moment by an individual, right? That's not system. That's a systemic racism. That's not anything, right? And I'm not saying like that's the end all be all of it, but this BLM movement and this idea that it's for police brutality or it's pro-black is one of the most insidious lies that I think has ever, that has ever come in the history of the United States. And I think 15, 20 years from now, we're gonna be reading about this in history. Something's gonna happen and people are gonna see like, this thing's gonna blow up and it's gonna be bad. And I think it's going to be like the way, like the propaganda that was going against the Jews in Germany. I, I feel like it's that insidious, right? And it's coming from a different angle, obviously, because it's coming from this space of apparent goodwill. But I mean, ultimately, it's this lie that's built to tell minorities and people that these people are keeping you down. And ultimately, who does it benefit? And who are the people championing it? These, these white people. And I can say that because literally I'll tell someone what I'm saying now. I'll be like, as a black man, I don't feel like there's white privilege. I feel like I have just as good a shot as anybody else. And these white people will start telling me about my experience and telling me why I don't get it. Like that's, like that is white supremacy. That idea that you somehow think you understand better, even though I very much live the experience, right? And the only difference about it is that they don't believe they're white supremacists, right? So they're actually worse than the KKK guy, because at least the KKK guy, 
K guy is self aware enough to embrace what he's all about, right? And I'll trust that guy more than I'll trust these this person because they're just completely ignorant and they have no idea what they're uh, you know what they're growing and what they're perpetuating in their beliefs. And it's just super rampant. And ultimately, it's not effective. Right. And then I feel rough because, you know, you see the NBA and all these NBA players kneeling and, they're you know, they're just doing what they're told, man. And, you know, a lot of them, like, I think the intent and the idea of like, oh, yeah, I'm a black man. Like, I want to I think black lives matter. Um, but like, ultimately, like, if you get down to the agenda and the media, they're just trying to get eyes. They're just trying to get attention. They're just trying to spread fear because it helps their agenda at the end of the day. I don't give a fuck about black people. I don't give a fuck about black men. I can tell you that because, like, when I go out and I talk about it, I get the same ideological bullshit. I am a black man, and I tell you right now when I say, yeah, I don't believe in white privilege, people don't give a fuck about my experiences. They don't care. They just want to push their message and their agenda and tell me how they're helping me by not listening to me or or care respecting what I'm saying or trying to look at me as an equal. Because if they were to see me as an equal, right, that would threaten them, and they can't see me as an equal. They have to see me as being beneath them because they have privilege like come on and the thing is you see like all these white liberals saying it like there's like of course there's black people saying it right because they're you know there's the whiners out there straight up yeah tell, i'm telling you right now if you're a black person and you're whining about black privilege you're a whiner and i don't respect that i don't respect that shit at all <laughs> right like get out and do something and make good decisions you know what i mean because like if you're a black person and you keep blaming white people for your problems you need to like wake the fuck up straight up like i just don't want to even deal with it anymore i'm just so done man i uh i'm not feeling super empowered talking about this and i'm I'm not really passionate about it but i'm because i'm tired about it i'm just i think the united states is an amazing country right i love the united states did you know there like 40% of the millionaires in the world live in this country, right? Second place is China, right? We have four times more millionaires than they do. Well, we have five times. We have They have 4.5 million millionaires in China, and we have almost 20 million millionaires in the United States. And you know what's crazy? We have like one quarter of the population. So that's a magnitude of 16. The wealth of the United States compared to second place is 16 times greater. Think about that. You know, the I went to this um, this BLM protest at City Hall, and there is this like this drag queen dude. He was um, you know, I guess he, she, I don't know how whatever they identify as. They, you know, were dancing around and you know, like, man, fuck Donald Trump and like screw white power and like all this stuff. And they were like hating on America or whatever. And you know, he's dancing around and like, like with his jock out and like in these glittery jeans. And I actually thought it was cool. I was just like, man, this is cool that he can do that. And then I thought, had this thought in myself of like, he's doing this in a white led country. If he went to Africa and did this, if he went to South Africa, if he went to Nigeria, if he went to Ghana, if he went to Liberia, if he went to Egypt, if he went to Kenya, if he went to the Congo, if he went to Madagascar, all those places, the black, you know, there's black people, black led places, right? He would get fucked up. <laughs> he would, like straight up. People would be clapping their hands and being like, yo, dude, express yourself. They'd be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And they'd beat his ass. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it was just a thought I had. And I was like, it's so funny how people criticize the United States and they talk about how crappy it is and like as a black person they're like man like these white people be oppressing us but it's like all right man you want to go to africa (laughs) do you want to go check your experiences and your your you know your your privilege why you know you're running from rebels or dying from malaria or fucking fetching water in a yellow container i lived in madagascar for two years man like <laughs> man people don't know how good they got it man it's like if you're black in america if you're at the bottom of the barrel in the united states you are winning 
you are winning, man. Like, I'm sorry, the U.S. rocks. Like, we have it so good here, man. And it just it really pisses me off that people don't see it. And I wish I could. So, like, I wish I could help other people see it because I just feel so grateful to be here, you know? I mean, I'm like, I literally, I mean, think about, like, I got unemployment. Like, you go to other countries, the COVID-19, something bad happens, then you're not getting unemployment. You're not getting some Democrats, some white Republicans and white Democrats thinking how they're going to give literally, like, 20 million people a whole ton of money. Like, that is privilege. I don't care if you're black. I don't, I'm a black man. You know what I mean? Like, what day and age are we thinking about? You think, like, in the Persian Empire or, like, the Roman Empire or the Ottoman Empire or the Mughal Empire or all these great kingdoms in Egypt when there was this crazy bad famine or something like that? They're like, okay, let's think about how we can, like, pay all our people and take care of them. That happened in Egypt, actually, for a little bit. But like it wasn't happening for everyone. It wasn't they weren't thinking unilateral care, welfare for the entire nation, a nation filled with despots and people at the bottom of the totem pole, like the bottom and the top of the totem pole and everything else in between. They weren't thinking about that. Man, like people just I just feel like a lot of people miss perspective. It's just like get some perspective. You know what I mean? Like this guy's going around dancing around and he's completely safe to do that and he did and he's just like oh yeah i'm safe and here's everything that's wrong with america and it's like the fact that you can say that and you're not getting the shit kicked out of you is a privilege right because like 200 and the thing is they and it's like they have this fantasy land in their head and it's like dude look at a history book never ever has that ever been able to happen like it's never been like that and then people talk about like, oh, they, it's like, what are you comparing the world to? Are you comparing it to some fantasy in your head that never existed? You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's frustrating because there's all these great things that are happening about it. And like, you see it with like so many things. Like, I'm not a woman, so I'm not going to even talk about women. I love women. I don't like feminism. I'm not a feminist. I'm an egalitarian. Um... You know, some people can call me misogynistic, whatever. The women in my life know I love them, so I don't need to prove shit to anybody. But, like, I just think, like, either you're a woman or you're a minority or, you know, you're black or you just feel like somehow you're unprivileged and you're able to listen to this video and you're in the United States. I would just feel like just check your, like, just check and really think about what it is, what are you comparing your life to? And it's like, well, look at that, that white guy who's like at the top of the tower and he's doing so well and he has all this generational wealth. And it's like, well, yeah, but you're focusing on the fact that he's male or he's white is completely, is completely off color, right? It's like, it has nothing to do with that because there's plenty of black men. You're not comp talking about Jay-Z or LeBron or Michael Jordan, right? You're not talking about, you know, I don't know who's another rich Asian guy. Kim Jong Il, I guess. Kim Jong Un. Kim, you can talk about those guys now. I'm not talking about dictators. But what I'm just saying is like, like this idea that people's color of their skin somehow benefits them by some magical formula. I mean, that happened. Like, you have the Jim Crow laws. That shit was real, right? You have the civil rights movement. I mean, I've been beat up by cops because I was black. I grew up in like a white ass flipping state with some white people, right? Really flipping white people who thought, oh, this guy is black, I am better than him. And they have said that to me explicitly and not explicitly, implicitly, not explicitly. Like I've seen it, I've heard it, I've felt it. And I'm telling you right now, in spite of the fact they said that and did that, that's like nothing. Right. And so the way I'll say it is this, if there is white privilege, I'd say it's like a six foot four guy playing a six foot five guy in basketball. Right now, height in basketball is a huge determinant of success. Right. I mean, if you're a lot taller, it's just it's an advantage in basketball to be taller. Right. If you're six foot 11, it's a lot easier to dominate than if you're six foot one with the same skill set, right? You don't need to be as skilled. 
When Steph Curry, though, is six foot three, he's not a big guy for a basketball. He's actually four inches under the NBA average, which is six foot seven. Yeah, he's still one of the best players in the league. Why? Because he was able to look at his advantages and he's a good shooter. Fantastic shooter. Best shooter of all time, actually, right? And 2020, um, because of that, he was able to overcome those disadvantages, right? And so there's plenty of guys who are taller than Steph, so they have an advantage. They have privilege over Steph because they're taller, right? Like, there's tons of players. You could say, who's a player? You could say, um, I don't know. Why am I having... My brain is just not working right now. Let's say Jimmy Butler. I, don't, I like Jimmy Butler. And I don't like doing that to him because Jimmy Butler's a stud. Let's say someone like, uh, who's someone? Paul George. Steph Curry is better than Paul George. Paul George is more athletic and def- he's way taller. So guy is actually probably faster and jumps higher and he's bigger. He has all the gifts where you would think, okay, this guy is totally has a privilege. He has an advantage over Steph Curry. He's better, but he's not. He's not better. Like no team on the planet would be like, oh, we have Steph Curry in his prime or Paul George in his prime. Let's take Paul George. Like any GM who did that, not to say that Paul George's a bad player. Paul George is, he's sick. He's a good player. He's a sick player. I actually feel kind of bad putting him under the bus too, but I feel easier doing that than like Jimmy Buckets because I don't know. Paul George is just like, I feel like he plays under his privilege a little bit versus Jimmy Butler is, like, that guy has come from the bottom, so I'm not going to say anything about him because that guy is definitely punching way out of his weight class. And Jimmy Butler is, Jimmy Butler is the truth. He's like, he's the truth, man. He's actually one of my favorite players ever. Um, just because of his tood, man. But, like, so that's what I'm saying. So Paul George, you know, who's like four, five inches taller than Steph, has this immense privilege but no one's picking him over Steph because Steph's a better player. Why? Because Steph's a better shooter. Now, is that Steph's privilege? No, it's Jeff. It's sure it's his privilege, but it's something he earned, right? So it's not it's not really a privilege. It's his right, right? Because he's earned it. It's his advantage. It's his authority. It's his power, right? And so, like, these white guys, like Steven Spielberg or, like, Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk or Steve Jobs, these white dudes or Tom Ford, right, these white dudes, right, they're not there because they're white and they're men. They're there because they worked hard and they figured out a way to succeed because I know legions of other white dudes that they had to step over to win, right? So, like... The idea that, oh, well, they're just white dudes and they're just winning. And I can say that because, once again, going back to the NBA, talking about privilege, being a white dude in the NBA is kind of tough, right? And, like, the only white players who go into the NBA and who succeed are from Europe or from – they're not from America, right? The only one who kind of had it recently outside of Larry Bird – was Kevin Love, and they smashed his confidence to a million pieces the minute he stepped into Cleveland, right? And I think it's because it's what, like, race matters as much as you think it is. Luka Doncic doesn't give a fuck what color he is. That's why he balls out. That guy doesn't give a fuck if he's white. He doesn't give a fuck if you're black. So he just balls out, and that's why he's 20 years old, and he's lighting the league up. Right? He's like top five player. And he's like a 20-year-old white kid. But you know what? He doesn't give a fuck. Right? <laughs> because it doesn't matter. He's a human being. And he's a man. And he plays basketball. You know? And like, that's what matters. And the thing is, we spend so much time on these little external factors. Like, if you say race matters, then race matters. If you say time matters, then time matters. If you say age, experience, all these things matter, then they matter. But when you just decide, you know what, I'm actually going to get to the core of what actually is going on here in any specific circumstance, then you start creating results. And then when those results happen, you realize that's actually what matters, the results you create in your life. It's not some like some idea of privilege and I'm just ranting right now. And I don't know, there's probably going to be like two people who see this video, so I'm not too worried about it, but example so i told you i was 
beaten up by cops and I had to go do a sales job because that was the only job that would hire me. Now sales is tough because in order to do well, you have to do commissions, right? And I was scared. A lot of people are scared of doing sales jobs because getting commissions results based results based income is hard because you know if you suck and you get a bad paycheck, it's because you suck, right? And there's no you can't hide from it. There's no one covering you. And but it was the only thing I could do. And I remember I was in you know white ass Utah with a bunch of people, and I was just thinking, man, like they're probably gonna think I'm gonna kill their TV or whatever. But then, you know what, I just decided that I had to do what I needed to do because, you know, stuff needed to get paid for. And I was super broke and I was just living off a bunch of people and I was tired of doing that because I was in a super bad spot and I was just trying to figure stuff out with the court. And I got I got fucked up. Right. So while that was happening, I just told myself. When these people come to the door, they're going to see this black man and they might have these preconceived notions. And I said, I don't care if I get like the most racist dude ever. He's going to not see a black man anymore. He's going to see Oni at the end of this. That's who he's going to see. And he's going to see that I care. And then I'm going to see if he needs some solar panels. (laughs) And if he does, then I'm going to help him buy them and save him some money. And with that mentality... I made something like $300 the first two weeks working 48 hours. That sucks. If you do the math on that, that blows. That's that's someone who really sucks. But then I got to the point, my last paycheck that I got from the solar job, very last paycheck I got, um, I worked probably about... 17 hours a week so i had done about 30 34 35 hours of work and i made over four grand right so i went from working 48 hours in one week and making 300 dollars to working 34 hours in two weeks and made over four thousand dollars Think about that. And when I saw that, I saw that, man, race don't matter, results do. And you know what? If your life isn't working out and you're having a hard time, just think about your results and think about the reasoning behind those results. Because, I don't know, I'm getting really sick and tired of people telling me why I'm disadvantaged or why I can't have what I can't have because of the color of my skin or because I'm a man or because I'm this or that. Like, I'm just done. Like, I can have whatever I want, right? That's the amazing thing about this time because I see the truth. United States and, well, not just the United States, but the world right now, it's, we live like in a magical time, man. And I want to spend more time experiencing that magic and not wasting my energy conjuring all these invented magical obstacles and i mean if people want to live in that then fine I'm, i'll be honest i just don't give a fuck anymore i don't give a fuck so it's like you know what like if people want to just be like oh yeah well no you don't understand you're right right i don't understand i don't understand and i don't care right because my life's been working out and i've been doing good and i happen to be a black man who's been beat up by cops and i can say that and so, I mean, I'm not going to say, like, Bruce Blood Holiday ain't a thing. I'm not going to say racism isn't a thing. But they're not the only things, right? I think human beings are incredible. You know, white, black, Asian, short, tall, fat, skinny, gay, ugly, beautiful, whatever, you know? Like, human beings are amazing. And I think human beings were able to create and build whatever we want. And I just, that's the kind of world I want to live in. I want to live in a world where that's what we see when we we talk to other people. We're not focused on what we think they look like or what we think they should be and what we feel like we should have for them. But we're just focusing on the possibilities. And I want to live a life of possibility. So this was a long, brown out video. I don't know if anyone's going to watch this rant. I'm kind of surprised if I'll ever watch this rant. But I just have to get this off my chest.
because uh, I'm tired of going out in the world. And I want to be able to experience the magic and the beauty. And I'm just tired of like all the hindrance and the hatred. Um, I love what I am, you know, and I love where I am at. And life's good, man. Life's good. So just get it going. Just get it going.